Well, hey, welcome back, y'all. Happy Tuesday. I'm here, our after the show chat, November 19th, 2024. Can you guys believe it's almost Thanksgiving? <sighs> Listen, people are not in our neighborhood. They already have their Christmas lights up. And I know some families have a tradition of that, like certain, uh, they put their lights up and their tree up, you know, at a certain time and whatnot. Um, so yeah, so it's, it's just beginning to look like, like look, look a lot, lot like Christmas. I'm like, are people just skipping right over Thanksgiving now? I guess because the stores make so much money, you know, during Christmas time, but anywho, so happy, happy, happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are having a good day. If you're off work like me, I hope you had a great day. Um, today was unusual for me because I've started piano lessons and I had my first lesson today. And so because the teacher, well, it was actually supposed to be for another day, but she had to reschedule because of something. And so the only slot available was for me to go in before work, which meant I missed the show this morning because show comes on here at eight. So I missed the show this morning. So what I had to do was watch it back on YouTube when I got home from work. And I guess, Brian, <laughs> that that was the entire show because y'all know how they do us, right? Even though they just started in September of this year, you know, uploading the full show on YouTube, they used to always upload the segments, right? But if something would go down <laughs> that they didn't want people to see, right, they would just edit it out. Um, and of course, places like Daily Mail, Raider Online, you know, Page Six or whatever, they would have captured the whole show anyway. So, <laughs> you know, so it was, it's like futile to do that, but they would do that. Y'all know they used to do us like that. And they would actually edit it out the podcast too, right, y'all? So it's like, y'all are so wrong, Brian. We want to see all the mess, right? So, okay, I got a lot to share about today's show. Now, if you were with me yesterday, you know that I told y'all, I was just reminding because we have like tons of new people because new people don't know how I roll. Now, if you've been with me for years, you know. But I just want to remind you again because today is going to be one of those days <laughs> again where I'm going to not hold back, you know? I know people have a problem sometimes, but I just want to remind everyone, the podcast belongs to me, okay? It's not yours, it's mine, which means I can say what I want to say, okay? As long as I stay within the YouTube rules, they're the only, that's the only entity that can tell me what to say or what not to say, okay? So today, I'm going to say some things about Kiki Palmer <laughs> that are going to really, really anger some people. You have two choices. Okay. You can respect the fact that I have a different opinion about her than you do and leave it at that. Or you can unsubscribe. But what I don't want you to do is waste time because I promise you it is going to be a waste of your time writing me a nasty comment because I'm going to tell you something, honey, I'm not even going to read it. <laughs> I'm not. OK, I'm also going to have some things to say about Sarah McBride, the transgender woman that they discussed today. OK. See, I'm, I'm actually just trying to let you know now that way you can just log off. Right. But if you're going to go the distance with me today, you're going to have to respect the fact that it is mine. OK, you don't have to like what I say and I don't have to like what you say, but we need to grow up and respect the fact that folks have different opinions about things and not get so riled up about it, okay? Okay? I love you guys. Here we go, are you ready? <laughs> all right. So first of all, the first thing that stood out to me today was, and actually truth be told, I thought they were gonna talk about this yesterday because y'all know this has been trending, what, since last week? You know, what is it? Today is Tuesday, so I think he made his appointment or he said he was gonna, appoint Matt Gates. I think that came out last week. Time goes by so fast, y'all. So whatever day it was, they did talk about it initially, right? Y'all remember that. So that was sometime last week. But listen, today they talked about the fact that, you know, all the scandal and is, is Congress going to release this report on Matt Gates, which is the exact reason that it was concocted, according to Anna. Y'all know Anna said that on the Behind the Table podcast that she heard, <laughs> and I believe it because y'all know Anna's in the inner circles, she heard that this whole plan to appoint Matt Gates or say to the world that he was going to appoint Matt Gates as the attorney general was hatched on a plane coming back from, not the UFC fight or something, they were coming back from somewhere. 
but he doesn't have any real intentions to put Matt Gaetz in there. This was just a way to kind of get him out of the out of the limelight, out of Congress before the report came out, you know? So what that they released the reporter not, report or not, guys, where do y'all land on that? You know, the ladies all were in agreement today, which was really good to see. They all agree that Matt Gates is a nasty character and that, listen, as Alyssa pointed out, these stories have been out there about him for years. Do any of you guys remember? I hope I get his name right because it's been a few years. Do any of you guys remember Madison Cawthorn or was it Madison Hawthorne? I can't remember, but he was in a wheelchair. He was a congressman. He was from one of the Carolinas. But I do remember like he was like the youngest person ever to be elected to Congress. Y'all remember him? Where he said that he was on some show or podcast, yeah, something he was on where he said that somebody, some members of Congress, people he had looked up to, looked up to all of his life, he was so disappointed when he saw that they were drug addicts and they were sex addicts. And he said that he was invited to an orgy. You, you guys remember that? And that he, he evidently went, okay? Because he said he saw people in Congress doing what he called key fobs of cocaine. You, you guys remember that? Now, yes, <laughs> Madison had his own problems uh, driving with a suspended license or revoked license or whatever. <laughs> like, I, listen, Madison was a whole work, piece of work himself. But basically, he lost when he re ran uh, for re-election, he lost, okay? And I think it was because they said he was just mired in too much controversy. But at the end of the day, um, people have said for a long time about this. But here's my thing. You see, this is what I was talking about, y'all, with the people who elected Donald Trump to office again. This puts our country in a very precarious situation. You know, we can have discussions all day about how nasty, uh, you know, Matt Gase is having sex with a 17 year old. By the way, by the way, I actually read, uh, saw the video of that attorney who spoke to ABC News, Juju Chang. And what he said was, too, which they did mention on the show today. Okay, so he paid the 17-year-old to have sex with him, okay? When he found out she was 17, he stopped. But then he resumed having sex with her as soon as she turned 18. So see, he's, 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 he's warped in his mind. You get what I'm saying? But you know, drugs and sex go together. That's something I learned working with the public for the 18 years I did. If someone's doing lots of drugs, they're also having lots of sex because, see, these chemicals mess with our brain. And uh, people get hyped up, especially on cocaine or ecstasy. My goodness. I've had men tell me, you know, when I've interviewed them, when I was an investigative interviewer, you know, that they, their penis wouldn't go down. Like they, it, the hard on wouldn't go, it wouldn't go down for hours after doing some of these drugs. Now, this is a channel for grownups. So you shouldn't be shocked to hear me say anything, right? We're all grown. We're adults, right? Uh, so at any rate, so. Uh, yeah, like, uh, that attorney also said during the interview that the girls testified in front of, uh, Congress that, that they would literally meet to do drugs and have sex. And it wasn't just Matt. So will Matt, if Matt does wind up getting in trouble, <clears throat> will Matt spill the beans on the other people in Congress who were participating in these orgies and drug parties? Cause it, it, it wasn't just him. See, everybody's looking at Sean Combs. Everybody's looking at the guy who was over Abercrombie, Abercrombie and Fitch, who just got arrested a few weeks back, is folks in Congress too, you know, who are, you know, people do say that Nancy Pelosi is an alcoholic, but, you know, I don't know if that's true or not. But my point is, what can we really say about Matt Gates when in less than 60 days we're going to have a president who not only um, is a convicted felon, but if people think that's not a big deal, maybe those were bogus, you know, charges, bogus you know, whatever, the fact that this man himself and people have heard him say it, that his daughter, Ivanka, that if she weren't his daughter, he would date her. And he, he said his own daughter was hot. And then that's, there's that very curious picture of him and her on that motorcycle. So what I think is this, if people have no problem with that, which they obviously don't because they voted for Donald Trump anyway, if they later find out that someone molested their little granddaughter, they need to have the same attitude. Oh, no big deal. See, people will get angry at that, but they won't get angry about the leader of the free world, <laughs> or at least uh, we're free right now, okay? 
We don't know what's going to happen in the next 60 or, 60 or so days, but they have no problem putting someone in office who looks at his own daughter in a sexual way, but they'll have a problem if someone were to look at their child in a sexual way. See, people are very messed up in their thinking. They're very twisted in their own thinking. You know, now let's move to, uh, let's see here, Sarah McBride. You know, Sarah came to our show, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago. And um, I was really happy for her because I agree with Sarah. I think she can do a lot of good. And she does, because she had come to our show before. This is Sarah McBride, McBride the trans, trans woman. I remember even the very first time she came, I could tell that she, she seemed to be really sincere. Like, and you know what they say, they start out sincere. And then when they get in there, they turn, you know, they turn into devils, you know, like what's happened to a lot of these people who started off really wanting to do good for their, their constituents. And then they got in there and they felt the power. Uh, they started, you know, meeting with the lobbyists. And then all of a sudden now they've forgotten about their constituents. So hopefully that won't happen to her, but it's happened to countless others. But I remember when she was on there the first time, she was truly sincere. She seemed like she really cared about the people that she was representing. But they talked about the fact that Man Nancy Mace has already started bullying this late. You know, but again, see, what can we say to that? <laughs> see, we can talk about that and say, how wrong is Nancy Mace? But these very people who are going to say how wrong Nancy Mace is to bully Sarah McBride, they elected a guy who have been bullying trans people. They elected a guy. So see, you, you know, I can't take these people seriously when they try to say, oh, Nancy Mace is, you know, a piece of, a nasty piece of work. Yeah, but did you vote for Trump? Okay. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing you got to say about Nancy Mace. Because <laughs> you got two sets of rules, obviously. You're, you know, you're very confused <laughs> in your purpose and thinking there. <laughs> if you got a problem with Nancy, you should have had a problem with him too. But I will say, even though um, I think that Sarah McBride, uh, like Sarah said, will do well, I, I am a woman. I am a natural born, born woman. I'm a real woman. And I don't want a trans woman in the restroom with me. I don't want that. When I go to the gym and it's all of us girls in there, sometimes we're coming in there before work, so you know you got to get dressed or whatever. I don't want a trans trans person in there with me. I don't. And I have no shame in saying it because it's not a shameful thing to say. Do I think it's right to bully trans people? Do I think hate, because that's what bullying is, is wrong? Of course not. But I'm a woman and I don't want you in here with me. Point blank and period. One of the, re one of the things that I will tell you all that I really, really I mean, I always loved when, when Caitlin was Bruce. I loved Bruce. <laughs> I really did. I mean, I remember Bruce winning. Um, he was on the Wheaties box, you know, like Bruce was a real icon. And I suppose, you know, you know, when he was Bruce, he still was until he got with Kris Jenner. And then it kind of, he became a reality star or whatever. But, but since she's, he's transitioned to Caitlin, one of the things that I really respect about Caitlin is that she tells the truth about it. She says, I'm not a woman. I'm a trans person. You know, and so I understand where some people are coming from when they say, I don't want a trans woman or a trans um, young lady playing sports with my daughter, not, not female sports. I understand that because that's not a girl. That's someone who's pretending to be because that's really what it is. A lot of you know my stance. I believe transgenderism is a mental health condition. I've said this years ago. Well, I've never heard. I couldn't. I, I can't believe. Well, believe it. That's what I think. I, I'm with the psychological community. I believe it's gender dysmorphia. That's what I believe. That's what the condition is called. I don't think it's a normal thing. If I came on here and I told you that I wanted to be white and that I was embarking on this change and I was going to have my skin change, which people can do and all this, you would think something was wrong with me. And you know, you would, you know, you would, you know, you would, why would you? Because it's not a normal thing. I remember when people went crazy over Rachel Dozel, you remember the white girl who, who pretended to be black. Uh, some of you listening, 
you were part of the community, just ran that girl down. What's wrong with her? Something's wrong with her. But they have no problem when some when a man says he wants to be a woman or vice versa. So no, I don't hate anybody. I've actually stood up for trans people in my job. But my thing is, I know as a woman, I don't feel comfortable having someone in there who is not a natural born woman. And I'm not changing that for anybody. But I can also stand side by side and say, it's not right on a job to bully this person because they're different. No, we're not going to go there. We can have our beliefs about it, but we're not going to go there because that is hate. That is wrong. Okay. Now the next thing, Kiki Palmer, <clears throat> when Kiki, you know, I, um, some of you are with me on my other channel. I don't know when this was, maybe it was earlier this year. Maybe it was last year, child. I don't remember. Time is going by just way too fast. But I did a couple of stories on Kiki Palmer because they were listener requested stories. And what I do for my stories is I do a lot of research. Up until I did those two stories on Kiki Palmer, I really, you know, I still think she's talented because she is. I mean, she actually is a lot like Whoopi in the sense that she can sing. Now, Whoopi can't sing. Or maybe Whoopi can sing. Somebody tell me. But Kiki can sing. And she can sing. Okay? She's got a beautiful voice. She can sing. She can dance. She can act. She can write. She also plays musical instruments. So Kiki is one of those people. She's just multi-talented. Okay? I still think that. And I respect her hustle. But when I heard that she was on there talking about some book she wrote titled Master of Me, <laughs> I was like, I can't watch this. I flipped it off. Because in my research, I learned some things about her. She's a nasty piece of work, in my opinion, in my opinion, not yours, in my opinion. And please don't give me that. As a black woman, we shouldn't speak. Get out, get, get out, get out, get away, get away, get away, get away. <laughs> yeah, she's a nasty, in my opinion, in my opinion, she's a nasty piece of work. And when I heard, when I listened to the audio of her mother speaking to her baby's daddy, the way she did, I understood why Kiki was a nasty piece of work. She came from a nasty piece of work. That woman had, that woman, boy, oh boy. And so I, maybe it's not even Kiki's fault because when you grow up around someone like that, you just, you can't help but take on some of their characteristics. Because as a kid, you are a sponge in a lot of ways. So no, I didn't want to hear Kiki talking about master of me. <laughs> Not, I didn't want to hear it. Not me. I didn't want to hear it. So I flipped it off. She's a beautiful girl. As I said, she's very talented. But I think her inward is what I'm talking about. The inward type of person she is, I think she's a nasty piece of work. Yeah. Then they had on there later, scroll down to my notes. Francis Coppola, or Coppola, a filmmaker. You know, the, I, I was just moved by how much respect Whoopi and Joy had for Francis. Um, I don't know if I've ever, what about y'all? I don't know, and I was actually thinking about this when I was watching it back. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody come on there where Whoopi and Joy showed, like, I knew they weren't faking it. <laughs> Like there have been people who have come on there like the president or whatever or vice president or something. And they, they, you know, they got up and all this kind of a thing. But I could tell they were just laying it on thick. But today was different. Whoopi especially. And Joy really, I mean, Joy clapped for real for him. And uh, they called him brilliant and so on and so forth. So that was a really good interview. And I wish I could see his movie that he was talking about. Um, but I don't think that's something I'm going to be able to watch. I don't think I have. I don't know if he said Netflix or something that he said that it was on, but at any rate, so those were my thoughts on the show. You know, Joy was there today, of course, so we know that she is not off on Tuesdays. It was just a fluke that Tuesday that she was off right after on Monday. Excuse me, right after being off on Monday. You know, I've been looking at some of the um, Twitter, excuse me, not Twitter, X, X, and Facebook and Instagram and threads and TikTok comments about Alyssa. And I'm telling you guys, fans are not happy. <laughs> this new flip, although she's not flipping though, to them, she seems to be flipping because they actually believed, you know, 
which, you know, they believe the show she had been putting on since she came to that show. They believe she had changed. They believe she had seen the light <laughs> that she never really had. And so now that they are using her, the show is using her to kind of help everybody understand the position of the Trump supporter, right? Because they don't have a Trump supporter on there. Um, people are saying on all of these social media platforms, this is too real for her. She's enjoying it. And I'm like, she sure is enjoying it <laughs> because that's who she really is. Those are the things she really thinks. And you can hear it because it has a tinge of, st she stings them when she talks about it. Um, she seems to be, um, she seems to have vitriol when she speaks about it. And I think that's what people were picking up on is the energy behind her words. They just didn't phrase it like, like that, but that's what it is. Um, Alyssa Fair Griffin, and I've said this since day one, so I'm not new to criticizing Alyssa. Um, she is just as far right as she ever was, but she needed a job, y'all. She needed a job. So she did what tons of people do. And listen, would I be shocked if we found out Alyssa went back to work for Donald Trump in some capacity? No, I wouldn't be. <laughs> I wouldn't be at all. Oh, but her father stopped speaking to her because of her, her, her speaking out against Donald Trump. Are you sure that's what happened? Or is that what she told us? That's what happened. I'm just going to throw out another scenario. Could it have been that her father got angry when she resigned and she explained to him, Father, I've got to, you know, pay these bills. And so I'm going to have to take jobs on these left-leaning organizations. Because her father's always been a right-wing nut job. He's, he's had his own newspaper. I mean, Meghan McCain has said he's referred to as a nut job in right-wing circles, okay? So that, that phrase didn't come from me. I was just repeating what Meghan said the inner circle say about him. So I think that's what he was angry about, you know, because she had only written for far-right organizations and uh, blogs and stuff as well. So I think when she explained to him, this is what I got to do. <laughs> you ain't got enough money to support me, child. You know, the life I'm, I'm, I'm living, right? This is what I got to do. I think he was pissed off at that, right? And well, you're not going to make the same amount of money working for The View and for CNN, from CNN and teaching at one of the liberal arts colleges in New York that you would make writing for a newspaper, your daddy's newspaper. That's going to be a whole lot less money than those other places, individually and combined. So we don't know because her father hasn't spoken out and he hasn't said, he hasn't confirmed that that's why they fell out. We don't know. We know it was about Trump, but exactly what about Trump was it? So see, I never believed that story. I never fully believed that. I always had a sense that Alyssa didn't tell everything. But who knows? Now, I also saw on Facebook, a lot of people were saying that they really just don't uh, want her there next season. Well, here's the deal, guys. They're going to have to bring on a Trump supporting Republican. They can't have these people, you know, quasi pretending and like Sarah and, and Alyssa. So <laughs> who do you think is going to go? It probably wouldn't be Alyssa. It probably would be Sarah. And she wouldn't get fired from ABC. They would just keep her on some other show. I mean, Sarah has been moved around. I've said this for years, like a chess piece. Wherever ABC needs her, they put her because she's got one of those personalities. And Sarah has said multiple times on various interviews, one being with Derek Monroe on his YouTube channel, that she does not even like talking about the news. So it's not like she's going to be heartbroken if they were to say, OK, we're going to move you from The View to GMA3, you know. Or let you fill in, you know, whatever on some other show that they've, they've got going on, right? So we don't know. Um, I've been saying now for two years that the table was going to change. I just couldn't tell you when the table is going to change. But it's looking more and more like it's going to be season 29 or probably, as I said the other day, it's going to be probably in the spring. Now, nobody's going to get fired, right? Because you know, well, we can't say they don't fire people during their contracts because Jedediah Bila got fired during her contract. Several other ladies have gotten fired during their contract. Uh, so what I'm saying, though, is Lissa probably is not going to be one of the ones to go unless she gets a really good offer from CNN or one of these other shows or she gets a job, um, you know, 
on the hill somewhere that she feels is going to better. Because let me tell you something, for someone like Alyssa, she understands that Trump means what he says about uh, retribution. But if you'll recall, after the election, when she was talking about how people are claiming she wore black to the show because she was grieving that Trump lost, excuse me, one, she said, I'm not, I'm not concerned about it at all. It doesn't bother me at all. Well, why would she say that? Right? That's someone who probably has already been working behind the scenes to figure out her game plan. Just like we figured we found out from Fox News what she had been doing before she turned in her resignation before January 6th, she'd already been trying to get a job at Fox News and they exposed her. And she said, they're lying. I never spoke to them. Well, you didn't, but your agent did. So isn't it really pretty much the same thing? Are they really lying, Alyssa? No, they weren't lying. Your agent was speaking to them on your behalf, okay? So at the end of the day, we don't know how the table's going to change. As I've been telling you guys for the past two seasons, this particular season, season 28, Whoopi, Joy, and Sunny's contracts um, expire. Whether they'll be renewed, we don't know. We know they haven't been just yet, though. We also know that a lot of people are losing jobs. Coda, I mean, excuse me, Hoda Kabe, Chris Wallace, Andrea Mitchell. You're, they're all saying we're moving around to such and such. You're never going to see those people again, okay? So we know that lots of changes are happening. So if ABC lowballs these women, will they accept the money? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. But there will be changes. We don't know who or what yet. But what we do know is they have to get a Trump supporter. They have to. That's what all the shows are scrambling to do. That's why Mika and Joe decided to change their tune because they were told we either going to have to bring in another show or you guys are going to have to make friendly with Trump, which is it going to be? <laughs> That's what Comcast told them. And so they decided to keep their jobs and their fat checks and make, make you know, nice with Trump. Yeah. Like Anna said the other day, we're going to see a lot of people, what they really stand for over the next few weeks, months, and years. Were they really serious about uh, Trump being a threat to democracy or were they just saying it because it was advantageous to say it and they're going to flip-flop and be on his side to keep from being a part of his political enemies or, you know, be targeted by him in some way? So there, I, there you guys have it. Those are my thoughts on today's show. I really enjoyed it. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Leave your thoughts for all the community about what your experiences were. Bye, guys.